Hello everybody, welcome to a new video. I'm Camelia from Calcedonia Sewing and in today's video I would like to talk a little bit about my latest make, uh, the Recital shirt from uh, Liesel & Co. Um, Liesel & Co, they have uh, two uh, shirt patterns for a woman. Uh, one, it will be the classic shirt and the latest one um, is the Recital shirt. The cool uh, part about these uh, patterns is that you can uh, change the, the pattern pieces between them to, to achieve uh, different kind of, uh, of shirts. The classic shirt is a classic shirt pattern with uh, the, the front bodice has uh, bust darts and the back has uh, two small pleats and the yoke of course. The recital shirt, um, in the recital shirt pattern you will have uh, two options. One, um, so uh, this pattern has a princess seams. Uh, one, it has a plain front with a band collar with a, a small uh, uh, ruffle on it and uh, the other option option uh, uh, option B view B is with a tuxedo uh, pleated uh, center front uh, piece and a tuxedo uh, collar because I already made a classic shirt and I knew how the fit it was on the classic shirt so I was thinking I'm going to make a mix of uh, the two uh, patterns, so I used the um, I used the color from the classic shirt, and the rest is the uh, recital shirt. But stupid me, I did not check the finished measurements. Although uh, I was thinking that the measurements should be the same. If you watch uh, the um, the size chart on uh, on both patterns, you see that uh, the, the the body measurements are the same, but the finish measurements are quite different. And I think that I, you can you will see in the pictures I will put from from this shirt of me wearing the shirt. Um, I did not bother to make a, a test cover for it, so I was thinking it will be the same, it will fit the same, but it doesn't. I took uh, the classic shirt I made uh, based on the finished garment measurements. On the body measurements I was like a 8 I think, but uh, or even a 10, but I was uh, based on the finished measurements I was a 4 and uh, both patterns are coming with uh, cup sizing so I uh, made uh, a 4C for the classic shirt and I was thinking I'm going to make the same because I like how this is fitting. I thought you, I'm going to make the same for the for the digital shirt. I made the same adjustments to uh, to this pattern as for the classic shirt, so uh, narrow shoulder adjustment because I I wanted to have the shoulder on the good uh, point here at the bone, um, and also I made um, sway back adjustment, my typical adjustment that I'm I always need to make on patterns. Another adjustment that I uh, did not make this time and I did make in the classic shirt was to shorten the, 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 the bodice. In uh, this one I think I shortened by uh, 5 cm and I was thinking I'm going to let it uh, as it is uh, in uh, this time. I need to say that it's just a little bit too long and for the next one I will definitely uh, I'm going to, uh, to shorten uh, the, the bodice again. Um, for the rest, this one I made. I took five centimeters from the from the sleeves out, in the, from the length, and in this one I added three back because in this one it is it is really too short. And after washing a few times, it did get really too short. So I added uh, on the recital shirt I added three centimeters uh, back, and I think is uh, the the length is now uh, perfect. So. I knew how this one was fitting and I was thinking that I'm going to get the same fit on this one except that the length of course uh, and the, the sleeve length that I knew that is going to be different. But I chose to make the, the pleated uh, uh, front and this fabric is really uh, is very drapey. I did not take that in consideration so I was thinking if I'm going to make a snip I'm going to, to make notches on every uh, uh, fold line I'm going to be able to match everything together and then sew very easy but this fabric was so 
so drapey and it was so moving it's a pretty uh, loose um, uh, wave all also so it did not go really good and uh, the, the, the one of the one of the pieces I had to 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 rip it uh, to rip the stitches completely and then iron back and then try it again my my folds are not perfect and luckily you cannot really see in this uh, in this print and in these uh, dark colors but they are not perfect and now coming back on the fit on the different fit on this one um, it is really too tight here above uh, above the bust now i am not sure if it's because my size was wrong because if i'm watching the the size chart from the regital shirt is uh, I have two inches lesser in the finished measurements than I have in the classic shirt on the same size. And if I uh, if I wear if I put the shirt on and I leave it unbuttoned, then I have really those two inches are give, are are the difference between a good fit and between this this what I'm getting now. So I think I, I need to, to, to check that maybe I'm going to make next time for the Regital shirt a cup D instead of the cup C. But something that is also uh, I'm not sure uh, about what, what, what about the size is because because my pleating was not really accurate. It can be that with if I did if I took three millimeters extra with every pleat, at the end I'll have. Um, one and a half centimeter lesser from uh, fr from my whole body here on this part. So I think the best is to make a muslin or even to use to make a, the test garment using the the plain bodies and then to see how the fit is because this this all these folds by taking one millimeter or two millimeters by every fold extra, of course that. Uh, let me with uh, much lesser um, fabric here than it was supposed to be. So other than that I really like the shirt. I, I think maybe I will have to wear it unbuttoned or to wear it with a camisole under and then to leave the to the first two buttons or three buttons unbuttoned and then uh, to, to have more uh, movement to more, more room for movement. But uh, yeah this is uh, I didn't I, I did not see that coming so it was really a disappointing uh, moment um, so the shirt it has uh, this uh, pleats in the front um, it uh, getting after you sew the pleats you need to attach it to the to the to the other part of the bodice to the side front bodice and for that I used a French seam because this fabric it was also very uh, very uh, revelry so um, to get a nice finish I used the a French seam and for the hem uh, you are instructed to, to fold this two times and then to sew it but I had so much bulk here on my uh, at the hem with uh, all the pleats that I, I, I could not do that on the in the, you have a, a half inch so um, 1.2 centimeters hem allowance and to turn that twice I, I, I could not turn that so at the end I turned the one uh, the half inch hem and then uh, searched a little bit and then uh, stitch it from the good side and I think it's looking nice also because the fabric is black on the inside you can you cannot really see um, so I use the the nice color from the from the classic shirt which I really really love is a uh, little uh, color is not too pointy it's not too big the fit here is very nice even if I never wear my shirts uh, buttoned I really like it and for the back uh, on the regital shirt you have uh, the, the pattern is made to with with two uh, um, darts long darts from here all the way to the hem but I wanted a relaxed look, so I let it uh, plain like this. I really like it. It's very roomy. Um, no folds, nothing. The yoke, you can. Uh, I they instructed that you can top stitch it two times. I did it only one time because this is not is not a sporty look. So I think it was good. Uh, for the buttons, I was pretty sure that I will have 
enough buttons in my <laughs> in my stash to put it on the shirt but I did not have I did have only finally I took 10 from a shirt for my husband but it was not enough I needed 13 so I ordered uh, online it's really difficult to buy buttons online because you cannot really see the color and also this I mean the size you can you can see it 10 11 millimeters but like these ones they have a small this ones they have a little bit of a, of a shiny things uh, in but you cannot really see from I could not see that on the screen so it's really difficult but I think the color is pretty nice and uh, it's fitting with uh, the rest of the shirt also the cuffs they have um, one uh, button on the cuff and one on the placket again for uh, the classic shirt uh, Lisa and Cole on, on their uh, blog I'll put a link here they have a great sew along for it and there you can see how you need to, how you can construct not how you need, but how you can construct the the collar very ni very nice with with the stand and the placket and the cuffs and the placket for the for the sleeves. Really great instructions with good uh, pictures and very uh, um, very good. And I I always use those uh, tutorials from the so long to to make the shirts. Other than that, uh, yeah, is is a shirt and. Uh, Another another nice uh, what what I'm doing. So you have here uh, all the the buttonholes. Before I'm starting to make buttonholes on the final garment, it doesn't matter if it's a coat or a short uh, or a shirt or a blouse. It doesn't matter or uh, for a jeans. I'm always making a, a piece of uh, a, a few uh, or at least one a buttonhole to test my. Uh, to test if I like uh, the the thickness of the thread, if I like the color, if uh, how uh, if the width of the of the buttonhole, and um, when I'm testing that, I'm always trying to uh, uh, replicate the uh, fabric that I have in the final product. So in this case, I have here the uh, button uh, band, the placket, with uh, one side is um, interfaced. The other, the other side is not interfaced so I'm trying to make it on a piece of fabric with a little bit of interfacing on one side and no interfacing on the other side and um, in this case I uh, when I'm I cut uh, small pieces like the color of the stand that needs to be interfaced I'm always interfacing a bigger piece of fabric and then I'm cutting directly the, the pieces so I have it already interfaced because I always find that if I need to uh, interface such small uh, parts like uh, calves or collar stands or collars and I cut it first from the fashion fabric in this case it was very drapey this is already interfaced and it is already it is still very drapey so without interfacing it was really drapey and and you have the chance to 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 move the fabric and to to get the piece out of shape. So if the, pa the, the, the piece of fabric is already interfaced and you cut your uh, small pieces from it, it's always, um, you don't have all those uh, risks. So uh, from the leftovers, I always keep a little bit to, uh, to test things like, uh, like buttonholes. And in this case, I took a little bit of the, uh, I pulled the, a little bit of the interfacing away and cut it off and then Fold it, and then I had the same thickness that I have here for the um, for the buttonholes on the on the real shirt. After I cut it, uh, after I made the, the the buttonhole the sizes I wanted and the, I was uh, satisfied with, of course I had to mark the buttonholes on the shirt. Normally I will uh, I will I I will measure with uh, my centimeter, and I always uh, put the shirt on and. Uh, I try to have a buttonhole at the bust point somewhere here and from that point I know that I want to have the first buttonhole on the black at um, like an inch from the from the seam here from the collar from the stand so between these two between the bust and this one I uh, I will uh, split the differences and then uh, I will evenly uh, get my uh, buttonholes but uh, I bought this thing, it's a, it's a Simflex, I bought it from uh, Amazon and uh, I use it now I use it now for the first time. I'm not sure how you need to use it and I think if you have uh, horizontal buttonholes it's uh, very easy. But in this case my buttonholes are, uh, 
are vertical so if I if I use this of course I'm going to get the center of my uh, or where the button is going to come so like this and this will be also most of the time the, the center of the buttonhole to be sure that I have the right uh, because my, my machine, my sewing machine is going to start at one of the ends of the buttonholes, so not in the center. I have a trick. I'm cutting, uh, this was the buttonhole, the tested buttonhole I made on the piece of fabric. I cut that out and then having this, of course, working on the table is much easier. Having this placed on the, on the shirt, I'm putting the buttonhole so the center of the buttonhole, most of the time I'm putting also a pin in the middle of the button, of the small buttonhole I cut it out, like so. So this will, will, uh, will be the middle of the buttonhole. And having the, this gadget on the table, on the shirt, I'm putting this in the middle. This is really difficult on the mannequin. And then with another pin, I'll put this where the end of the buttonhole is and now I know that I need to start with my sewing machine from here and my sewing machine is sewing the buttonhole up so it will start here and it will stop and I'll get exactly the size I want. So like this I used, uh, I used this uh, small buttonhole everywhere. I, I uh, placed it in the middle of the seam flex or yeah the seam flex <laughs> and then under I put it a small pin and um, and so I got the the buttonhole marked exactly on the good spot. I'll put here on uh, on uh, YouTube a small video or maybe at the end of this video too with a little bit more close up uh, where you can see what I uh, uh, the way I'm doing it if you want. <laughs> so um, the buttonholes are made all by machine. My machine did a really good uh, did cooperate in this uh, case. I always uh, try to think ahead when I need to make buttonholes. When I'm making, uh, for example, these uh, plackets, I know that uh, in this case, I know I need to. I will have here. I will have to sew here my buttonholes. So I know that my machine is not really liking if it's too much bulk or if it's too much. Um, the the fabric is not even. So if I have here a few. Uh, uh, seam allowances uh, stacked together and here I have nothing I know that my machine is not going to sew so I'm always thinking ahead and in this case I trimmed very good the seam allowance so I have a pretty uh, even uh, piece of uh, fabric that is going on the machine for to make the buttonhole these ones they went uh, all uh, good from the first time but here I started the first one sewing like this and my machine did have to go of course first over this thicker part of the uh, collar stand so it did not go good uh, at the end I had to uh, to rip it off what uh, did get sewn and I turned the shirt uh, upside down and I sew it from up to down and here I had I had here no bulk so it went uh, it went fine um, this is a little bit what I had to say about uh, the, the classic slash retital shirt. It's a very nice one and I'm really really sorry I made this mistake and I did not uh, take the time to... Now I know that if and you know that if you want to sew this shirt and you want to make it in a drapey fabric you really need to to uh, mark this uh, this falls very good. Maybe with the tailor tags, maybe with, uh, with chalk or uh, other markings or with uh, with uh, the Berta paper, uh, the carbon paper, I did not use any of that, and now I'm sorry because I'm pretty sure. Uh, watching from the from here, they also here they don't look really really even. And as I said, on so on five or five pieces, if you have a few millimeters, one or two millimeters, you 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 really lose here maybe just enough to to have the shirt fitting uh, properly. So this is what I had to say about the about this shirt for our next projects. Uh, so this thing is really uh, handy on marking uh, uh, the buttonholes and making the spacing very easy without any calculation or measuring. Um, further, I need. Uh, I know I said the last time that I was going to make a denim jacket is still in the 
tracing uh, the pattern uh, phase. But in the meantime, I cut a piece of uh, I cut it, uh, um, a jeans for my uh, little one, for my girl, and uh, I'm going to take part again uh, in a, in a pattern testing. I I did a lot of uh, testing this year. I think last year too, and uh, most of them for uh, each to stitch uh, patterns and for uh, designer stitch. I'm trying to sew and to take to make to pay, take part in uh, testers only if the garments are things that I'm going really going to wear. Uh, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> not unfortunately, each to stitch they they they, they did come with uh, with a few. Uh, tester calls the last time but they are all for summer clothes and I'm, I'm trying to think ahead a little bit and uh, make things for the for the cooler uh, period so I think I'm going to buy those patterns and keep uh, my time uh, to sew my own uh, things here but uh, designer stitch is uh, planning things for the for the fall so I'm going to get in one of their tests soon and uh, as you know, probably or not, I am a part of uh, the Lisa and Co. Advisors uh, Circle um, uh, small uh, community what uh, Lisa did make and there I'm, I also try to, to do some contributions with the things I'm making. Um, so enough enough to sew but uh, the time is a bit short. Also in uh, knitting, I when I can sew, I, I knit. And the last time, I mean, I'm still busy with the sweater. I started maybe a year ago. Yeah, that's and I I, I think I'm, I sew too much, and that's why I don't have time to to knit. But um, this was the video for today. Thank you again uh, for uh, watching. If you have uh, any questions uh, about uh, the fit on the retail shirt or the classic shirt or any other kind of uh, sewing related questions don't hesitate to put them in the comments don't forget to say hi it's always nice to hear from you to hear your opinions and your thoughts about uh, about uh, the videos uh, don't forget to subscribe and to like the video and i hope to see you next time thank you again for watching bye